Welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Angel Storm. I'm so thankful that you are joining me today. Happy Thanksgiving week. I hope that all of you are not letting the narcissist suck the joy out of this holiday season. Every year I get asked to do a video specifically on how to deal with the narcissist during the holidays or how to transition your children during the holidays and what to do if the narcissist doesn't follow your time sharing schedule, etc. I also get asked about what to do with your time and how to handle your emotions if there's a narcissist in your family who's ruining the holidays for you. So in this video, I kind of want to cover all of these topics as quickly as I can, but also give you more resources so that you can truly dive in and do the deep work. So to begin with, we're going to start with the foundation of what is going on inside of you during this holiday season. A lot of times we get focused on what the things are that are going on that are wrong or not exactly how we want them to be during this season, right? We focus on what the narcissist is doing or not doing. We focus on how somebody over here should be doing this, but they're not doing that thing. And instead of focusing on ourselves and really paying attention to how these thoughts are influencing our emotions and therefore how our emotions are influencing our mood and our behaviors, especially over the course of the next several days and several weeks of the holiday season, uh, we are focusing on trying to control our outer world, right? So the foundation to any issue that you're having with the narcissist is making sure that your inner world's foundation is really built up. And this is something that I talk about constantly on this channel. And so if you need help uh, dealing with some of your emotions or setting boundaries or so forth, I have playlists that deal with every single one of those issues. So you can really dive into your specific need on my channel. From there, once you've identified and really turned your focus back inward about how you are thinking and feeling and the things that are in your control, you can start prioritizing where your time and energy need to be spent. In other words, if you understand that the narcissist is going to try to find ways to ruin your holiday, which is a trait of a narcissist, by the way, and I have entire videos, again, on why every birthday, every holiday, every special event is always ruined and made to be about the narcissist, you need to understand that this holiday season will be no different unless you start shifting your mindset and your priorities around this holiday season. For example, a lot of people who are dealing with a narcissist in their lives are codependent or have codependent traits, and therefore they are outsourcing their joy, their power, and whether or not they have a good time to what other people around them do. And maybe for you, this isn't the narcissist in your life. Maybe for you, this is your ex extended family or, you know, your mom or your sister or your cousin, niece, nephew, whatever it is. And when you do that, you are really releasing the authority that you have over your own life to that other person. Meaning, unless that person makes good choices in your head for you, then your life is not going to be the way that you want it to be. So one of the things that you need to do is check and see if you have given responsibility and authority to somebody that shouldn't have it. That's really your responsibility to take care of yourself and your own emotions. They're obviously your responsibility. Also check and see if you've picked up any false responsibility along the way. People who are codependent or who have codependent traits try to please everybody. So they are trying to pack full their schedule full of other people's things. They're going to prepare the cookies for this meal and they're going to do the turkey for this meal and they're going to drive to and fro and they are trying to make all of these events happen that are actually other people's events. But their responsibility is really a false one, thinking like, if I don't do this, this party is going to be ruined. Or if I don't do this, so-and-so is going to be upset with me. Or if I don't do this, I won't get promoted at work. All of that is false responsibility. And instead of really going inward, again, back to the foundation of your inner life and trying to figure out, do I even want to do this thing? Is this party going to bring me joy? Is spending time with these people going to enhance my life? Or am I doing this out of a sense of obligation? 
When you feel like you're doing something out of obligation, it's not always a negative thing, but you need to understand if you're doing it from a place of obligation, you're not going to be able to stay in that environment for eight hours and keep on your happy face and make happy memories with people and genuine connections with people. So instead, again, set boundaries, set time limits. I'm going to show up and I'm going to say hello to everybody and I'm going to genuinely mean it when I say I wish you a happy Thanksgiving, a Merry Christmas, whatever the event is that you're going to, and you're moving on, right? You're not spending your whole life there. And in fact, it can often help if you have a commitment to yourself that you're going to put in place that's happening right after that event. So for example, the events at seven, you're going to show up, you're going to stay until 730 because at eight o'clock, you've made an appointment for yourself to be in the bath, to watch such and such a movie, to go to your book club or whatever it is that you're going to do to really take care of yourself. One of the things that I really encourage people to know is their own body, like your own anatomy. You need to know your blood chemistry. And when you when you are not paying attention to that stuff, it can really get, it's easy for cortisol, for example, uh, norepinephrine to be dumped into your system and for you to be running off of stress the entire holiday season. So instead of really practicing deeper self-care and deeper nurturing and deeper connection to yourself, which is actually what this holiday season is all about, right? It's all about connection. You neglect your inner world and you try to focus on what you're doing in the outer world. And this creates really a false sense of connection, more false responsibility, and it can even turn into resentment because you resent that you had to do this stuff. You resent that you went to this thing. You resent that you wasted your time cooking, baking, you know, gift wrapping, whatever it was that you did for somebody who's ungrateful, for somebody who's this and this and this. And again, this is really placing responsibility on somebody else for your own emotions. The fact is that you chose to do those things. So when we can take back and pull back the responsibility into our own self and say, I'm making a commitment to myself first so that when I show up and I say yes to you, I would love to show up to your holiday party. I would love to bring cookies, turkey, stuffing, whatever I'm doing, I mean it. When it comes to... Uh, dealing with the narcissist in terms of practicalities. So number one, I'm going to assume that you got the baseline, right? You, you understand how to uh, control your own emotions. You understand your own desires and how to create the life that you want. You're checking in with yourself. You're practicing true self-care. As my pastor says, this is not a bubble bath and a gallon of wine. This is actually you know, listening to your body. This is listening to your thoughts. It's paying attention and reconnecting to yourself and making sure that your decisions are based and lined up with the life that you want to have. Um, when I'm going to assume that's all there. When you're dealing with a narcissist, it is important to understand their goal is to ruin your holiday season, the memories that you want to have with your children or your family or, you know, making your flight or leaving the house on time. All of that stuff is subject to get interrupted by the narcissist when you do not appropriately plan. One of the things that I'm going to do only this week, it this deal ends on Saturday, is open up my bonus course that I only give to people who have paid in full to join my narcissistic detox intensive. And I and it's specifically a course dealing with narcissists for the holidays. It helps you create an exact plan so that there it is literally foolproof. And you can get that in the link in this description of this video. But again, it's only until this Saturday. So only the week of Thanksgiving, I'm not opening it back up after that. This is my additional bonus uh, that I'm doing for Black Friday. If you missed my first bonus, it's on negotiating with a narcissist, which by the way, since I opened that up last week, I've had two people settle outside of court in a formal mediation session with a narcissist. And I've had 14 or 15 people message me and say, I got what I wanted in terms of my holiday schedule just by talking to the narcissist over talking parents or whatever. So if you do not have that negotiating course, it's on sale for only $47. And I will leave that one always available, but it's going up to its normal price of 250 after this month is done. So you can get that course only this month for $47. You can get only dealing with a narcissist over the holidays for till the end of this week, till the end of Saturday. 
If you have children, by the way, you need to go get that course because it will help you exactly understand what's important to you and prioritize to you so that the narcissist cannot disrupt the memories and the time that you want to have with your children. One of the things that people do when they have kids is that they try to make the kids do all of the things that they are going to do and they want to do over the holidays, right? The grandparents want to see the kids, the aunties and uncles want to see the kids, you know, the kids' school has something, your work has something, and there's your church has something. There's a million things that you need to go do, and you're not prioritizing the health of your children, their inner world, typically because you are not integrated with your own inner world. So again, I'm going to assume you've already done that. In that case, when it's truly only external environment situations like the narcissist trying to interrupt your schedule, you need to plan for that. So for example, if the narcissist is notoriously been late dropping off the children uh, during holiday times for their birthdays and so forth, do not plan for the holiday party to be the day that the kids get dropped off. So if the kids get dropped off at five and you need to be out of the house at six so that you can make the thing at seven, that's too much. You need to really prioritize that. So you either need to one, negotiate with the narcissist to have them drop the children off earlier, or you need to think about your schedule in advance and say, I can't, I'm not going to be able to make it until eight, or I'm not going to be able to make it at all, or I'm not going to make that thing. But how about if we have a lunch together, you guys can come over to my house the next morning, or we have brunch together or whatever it would work for your schedule. So find ways to move that around. Because again, this season is truly about joy. It's about connecting. It's about remembering the things that we are thankful for. And more importantly, it's about the birth of our savior, right? So we need to build more of that, create more of that in our lives when we're not in this holiday season. Be thinking about the things that we are truly grateful for and making our lives revolve around those things. Not about well, the narcissist did this or so-and-so said this or they want me to do this. It's all this negativity that we're absorbing the energy of and then we're emanating that frequency, that energy out into our environment. We're wondering why our children are you know, even more crazy and even more unruly. It's unfair to put these type of demands on them. Okay, so my course will really help you prioritize what is important and how to make sure that the narcissist can interrupt those things. The next thing I want to talk about in this video is what to do when you're alone during the holiday season. I think more than anything, people who have narcissistic uh, people in their lives or who are raised by narcissists or have any kind of thing about a narcissist going on really relate to the most is that it's hard all year, but it's especially hard this year because you're seeing other people getting together with their family and um, gathering with their friends and, you know, exchanging gifts and having big dinners and so forth. And one of the things that I want to remind you of, again, is that you need to give to yourself. You have to be able to receive from yourself and you can only receive from yourself when you understand what you need to give yourself in order to find people and truly make connections that are deep enough to be able to cultivate that externally. You're only giving away right now what you have. So again, I'm gonna assume that you've done the inner work, you've already done this inner healing, and that you're ready to truly create the life that you want external to you. One of the things that happens is that people keep repeating the same cycle over and over. So they say to themselves, next year will be different. Next holiday season will be different, but nothing ever changes. They keep having this alone, lonely holiday season, and they really want to have a season that's full of joy, full of connection, full of, uh, you know, events and memories and all of this stuff, but they never get it. Why? Because they never make behaviors that shift the trajectory of their external life. This is a good indicator that your mindset did not shift. You have not done the inner work. There is an, a false belief or a mindset that really needs to get shifted so that you can uh, allow abundance into your life. You can allow and make space for this type of joy. When we keep thinking, I will be happy when the narcissist does this, when the narcissist does that, a lot of times this is for most people you know, again, just speaking from my own experience as a coach, most people who have this are older people who have adult children who are narcissists in some way, or you perceive them to be narcissists and they're not visiting you, they're not letting you see your children or your grandchildren, 
and you're feeling like I've spent my whole life, you know, dedicated to you and now you're not even letting me have memories with my, my grandchildren or whatever. And in this situation, again, I need to tell you, you are responsible for your happiness. Your emotions are an inside job. They're literally yours. You need to take responsibility for them. So when, when I get down to the root of, I wish I had a healthy relationship with this person, whether that's your son, your daughter, your nephew, niece, whoever it is to you, I want you to think about why there isn't a healthy relationship. Go down five times, five levels, and why that thing is filling is uh, creating a void in your life. In order to fill a void, you have to know why there's one being created in the first place. Because when when you know that you have done all of the inner work and you have made the uh, the necessary bids for a connection with that person, you need to understand that anything past that is a false responsibility. And again, a lot of codependent people or people with codependent traits tend to do that. So they say, well, if that person would have done this, or maybe if I try this and I'm going to try 90,000 things and this year it'll be different. That's a false responsibility. Thinking that you need to earn somebody else's acceptance and bend over backwards to try to meet their standards, which by the way, a narcissist will always shift those lines. That's why it's going to be impossible to do that. So when you're putting your energy and your time and your focus into what I can do to kind of get them to give me something, that's really manipulation. You need to stop that. And the only way to truly have a mindset shift so that your behaviors truly change is to change your belief system. That's why you have to go down five times to figure out why is this void in my life. A lot of times this just has to do with something that you hang your identity around. If I don't see my grandchildren, I'm not a good mom. It's a reflection of me as a mother. It's a reflection of me as a grandmother. It's something to do with your identity. You are tying your worth to the outcome of that specific relationship, and it's highlighted this time of year. It's actually an amazing blessing if you think about it because it gives you exactly what you need to be focusing on instead of wondering, I don't understand why this isn't working or I don't know what else I could do. That's all false responsibility. And when you understand that it actually was created, that false responsibility was created because of this void that has to do with your own identity, with your own value, with the way that you perceive your own self-worth, your own self-value, that responsibility now becomes yours again, instead of outsourcing it always to this person. Is there is there anything that could take the place of your son or daughter, your your grandchildren, your nieces or nephews or any kind of thing, of course not, right? That It's just like if, if you didn't have a parent growing up, you didn't have a mom or you didn't have a dad growing up, nothing could take that, that person's place. But filling that hole is your responsibility. It's, it's a false responsibility by saying, I'm always going to have that hole because so-and-so didn't fill it for me. So when you can take back your power, you know where to start channeling your and directing your energy to uh, fill that void. It's okay to say, I cannot replace this relationship no matter what I do, no matter what I try, no matter what else comes to me. That void can't be filled. You know, that connection cannot be replaced by somebody else. But what I can say is, okay, I've tried everything that I could do to make a connection with that person. What are some things that I can do? What are some ways that I can build the life I want? Some of those things might be to create a bigger um, network of friends. Maybe for you, you really do want a network of like five or seven close friends that, you know, any given day of the week, you could say, come over to my house for dinner or you go over there. You want to start creating that. You need to think about what kinds of things would make me attractive to people like that. And you want to start developing those characteristics within yourself. In order to do that, you need to be in relationship with people, right? You need to actually be out and about and networking and socializing. You need to get on uh, some of these Facebook groups and really connect with other people. There are groups on Facebook that are like single people or, you know, people ages such and such to such and such meetup groups, you, you need to make a commitment to yourself. Okay, I don't need to stay the entire four hours or three hours that the event is being held, but I'm going to show up for 30 minutes. I'm going to say hello and introduce myself to three different people. I'm going to initiate the conversation. 
and I'm going to start connecting with people. I'm going to learn how to cultivate healthy conversation so that I can have healthy relationships. Some of this stuff is a skill, meaning you don't just get it because you listen to a YouTube video. You need to get out there and actually be putting this stuff into action. If you don't put it into action, you're thinking you're cultivating a skill when really all you're doing is creating a version of reality in your mind that may or may not ever come into existence because it matters that you follow through all of the way, right? You have to keep following through with that thought by putting it into a behavior. Remember, behavior follows belief. Change your belief system. You got to go all the way through, right? So your beliefs, your mindsets, your behaviors all have to align in order to start making a habit. And that's what makes lifestyles. So I really want to highlight that to you, that if you are not putting in the effort and the work to cultivate the things that are in your control, don't expect that thing that's out of your control to just fall into place and then you get those things, right? Because a lot of people think, when I have a healthy relationship with my family or my extended family, then I'll be able to you know, have this great social life or then I'll be able to get promoted at work or then I'll have you know, more um, emotional capacity to do such and such with my church or my religious organization or whatever it is for you. And that's just not the truth. The truth is you have everything that you need right now to start building the life that you want. It's just about if you're willing to take responsibility for that or not. Because once you have truly put forth the effort to make a connection with an external person, uh, whether that's you, even if, even if they're blood, even your children, your grandchildren, whatever, all you can do at that after you have truly done the work, not in your head. Well, I have said that. I have. I. I try to forgive. I've tried to say this. Not like that. I mean, truly doing the work. Once you've done that, you need to accept that person has free will. They're a powerful person. They're making powerful choices, just as you are a powerful po- person making powerful choices. So the choice to not move on with your life, that's your choice, and that's a powerful one. And your choice to let that person go and allow them to come back to you if and when they are ready, that's also a powerful choice. And you have the capacity to make both of these choices right now. Your your outcome of your life is nobody else's responsibility. It's your sole responsibility. And so long story short of what I'm trying to say in this video is that when you've done the inner work, the, the natural capacity for you to process what is happening during this time, whether it's great, amazing, you're getting super high highs and you're having super low lows, if you truly understand how to take care of yourself, how to do true self-care and how to honor yourself with your true self-worth, not the value that you get from being around other people and doing all of their chores and doing all of this giving for other people, which is amazing, but it only matters if you're doing it from an overflow, not for something, not for acceptance, not for your self-worth. When you can do that, then it's very easy for you to navigate what to do next. Because feeling lonely, that's a real feeling. And being able to sit with that feeling and say, I'm feeling lonely. Why am I feeling lonely? Why am I feeling neglected? Why am I feeling like something is missing? And being able to go down, down, down and truly identify what is missing and then start making a plan for how to cultivate that for yourself. That's when real change is going to happen. This holiday season, I want you to understand you can have whatever it is that you want if you are willing to do the work, okay? In an age of information, it's it's unreasonable to say, I didn't know these things or I didn't have access to that information. There's a million YouTube videos just like mine telling you different ways to go about how to navigate this holiday season, especially with a narcissist. If my video isn't connecting with you, please, by all means, go research somebody else's. But I find that when your foundation is there, it doesn't really matter what's going on on the outside of you. You're able to make the most. You're able to extract the things that actually matter to you, that you want to have out of that situation. So I really just want you to know two things. Number one, you're a powerful person. You're making powerful choices. You can have the life that you want right now, even in the midst of the chaos, even in the midst of this holiday season. And number two, there are resources to help you do this, to help guide you step by step. One of those being navigating with the narcissist and the holiday season. I have an entire course. Again, I've never offered this to the public. It's only available to people who have 
paid in full for my narcissistic detox intensive and qualify for the bonuses, but I am releasing it now until the end of this week and you can get it in the description of this video. You can also learn how to negotiate with a narcissist so that whether you're chatting over talking parents or you're actually having a, a formal mediation session that's court ordered, you can leave the room with what you want. I know this stuff works. My clients are having amazing success by getting this $47 course that I'm offering to you and really start uh, cultivating the skill sets that are going to serve you. Communication skills are going to serve you whether or not you're with a narcissist. Uh, negotiation skills are going to serve you whether or not you're dealing with a narcissist. Learning how to navigate the holiday season, whether you're with a narcissist or not, because you understand how to truly take care of yourself and how to keep your eyes on what kind of life you actually want is going to serve you whether you're with a narcissist or not. And so I hope this video helps you and I will see you next week.